Hello everyone and welcome to another Factorio Space Age tutorial. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me. And we are finally covering fusion power. So it took me a little bit to get this one out. I wanted to, you know, kind of understand the mechanics better and play around with some things. Uh, but I'm going to give you hopefully all the information you're going to need to know to understand fusion power in Space Age expansion and, you know, build some setups with it, understand the ratios, what it requires, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to hop right into this. Fusion power is an upgraded version of power generation past nuclear power. So we have, of course, steam power, we have solar, we have nuclear, which has been in the game for a very long time. And then lastly, we have fusion power. And this is incredibly powerful and in some ways actually simpler than nuclear power and in other ways a little more complicated. We'll get into that shortly. Uh, but this is unlocked on Aquello. So this is unlocked on the last planet. This is the fourth planet. And you're going to need to you know, go to all the three main planets first, probably to be able to get to Aquello, or I would suggest that at least. And once you get there, you can unlock this. And then pretty much all of the resources you're going to need to actually run fusion power are going to be from Aquello. But this does not mean that that's the only place you can use this power. You're just going to have to do some transportation, uh, which is not that big of a deal, which I'll show you here shortly. So let's start with the ratios and kind of how this works. The ratios are actually a lot simpler than they are for nuclear power. And you can see here on the right, we have our numbers. So uh, health is kind of irrelevant, but it consumes fusion fuel cells. And the max consumption rate that it cons can consume these at is 100 megawatts. Now, one difference here between this and nuclear power is that it actually consumes variably based on how much draw is on it. Whereas nuclear power consumes fuel cells at a constant rate, regardless of if it's even even has a power draw or not, it will just always consume fuel cells at the same rate, no matter what. Uh, fusion power is different where it will actually consume this based on how much draw is, you know, being pulled on this and how much is actually being used. But the max draw is 100 megawatts. Now a fuel cell has 40 gigajoules of fuel value. So breaking this down, at max draw, at max consumption of 100 megawatts, this will last you 400 seconds, which is like 6.6 .6 minutes. Uh, it's like 6.63 or something like that, but six and a half, 6.6 .6 minutes is close enough if you're on max draw, right? I, I kind of like to just assume that you are to you know, play it safe and make things a little easier for yourself, but that's how long you can assume a fuel cell will last. So not too bad. That's actually longer than a nuclear fuel cell will last. Now, moving down, this consumes a liquid. There's actually two versions of this liquid, but we'll start with the one that this consumes, which is cold uh, fluoroketone. I hope, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I tried looking up pronunciations and like I couldn't actually find any, which is weird, uh, but uh, it, it consumes this liquid, which is this light teal kind of stuff here on this input, and it consumes it at a rate of up to four seconds. Again, this is gonna be a variable based on how much you're using the power and such, but it's going to consume at a rate of up to four per second. And then the other thing is it actually consumes power itself. And this is another noticeable difference between fusion power and nuclear power, because nuclear power doesn't actually require power to run it itself. Like you need power if you're bringing like bringing uh, fuel cells there with logistic bots and having inserters or whatever. But the the reactors for nuclear power do not require power themselves. However, these do. It's a very small amount, it's 10 megawatts per reactor, but it is worth noting that these do actually need to be connected to some sort of power source, probably themselves. And then it generates plasma, and that's this kind of pink looking stuff here that outputs uh, on these outputs here on the other sides. And this outputs it at a rate of four per second, and the target temperature is one million degrees Celsius, which is, crazy and will come into play here uh, i'll show you in a minute and then the max output for that is 100 megawatts worth of plasma okay now you're going to start seeing some connections here like okay well this has a bunch of plasma you know ways it can go in and out and then also a similar looking liquid to this and we're going to get into that but the ratio here is super simple because if we look at this we can see that the rate that these fusion generators, which is what's actually going to generate your power, basically like a steam turbine would be. Um, this consumes plasma at a rate of two a second. 
and that is obviously half the rate this generates it. So one of these can support two of these. And then to make things even easier and more rounded together is it outputs the fluorocatone at a rate of two a second, and this consumes it at a rate of four a second. So this is also exactly a two to one ratio in that regard. And it's just a lot easier than nuclear uh, ratio wise to, to figure this out. And I love that it's just really clean whole number ratios. Now, each one of these can output power up to 50 megawatts apiece, which for comparison, the steam turbine can only output at 5.82 megawatts apiece. So this is almost 10 times the power output of a normal steam turbine, which is pretty crazy. Okay, so how does this actually work? Well, you're going to initially need this fluorocatone, but it has to be cold. There's two types of this. There are uh, cold fluorocatone and there's hot fluorocatone. And the cold uh, version of it is made on Aquello. If we alt click this, uh, we can come here and well, you're gonna, you're gonna need to go through a process. So first you're going to need to actually make the hot and then, or this, this stuff here, and then you're going to have to cool it in a cryogenic plant, which is of course on Aquello. And this stuff has to be made on Aquello because it requires uh, fluorine and ammonia, and these things cannot be barreled or anything to be transported off planet. So this has to be initially made on Aquello, uh, but you can barrel the cold version of fluorocatone, which is how you could get this to another planet. So you take this, you make this initially, right? And then you take this and you can turn it into the cold version. And that is what is going to be used in the reactor. So you take the hot stuff, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio here. You get, you take 10 and you output 10 of this cold. And then that's what goes in here, right? So this is like the cooling. And then it just takes the fusion power cells, which are just an item that you drop in there. So you will still need to have bots or belts or something bringing these in, but uh, you, you just put those two ingredients in and it's going to start producing power and outputting this pl plasma. Now these fusion generators take plasma and then they output the hot fluorocatone, which we can then, as we just saw, turn back into the cold stuff. So you can create these really nice loops. And that's why you would only need to initially bring the uh, barreled cold fluorocatone to the other planet probably once initially to get it started. And then this should be able to feed itself. I have a large setup here I'll show you in a minute that I've had running for quite a while. And it's been able to just completely feed itself in a, in a loop here. Now, you'll notice this has two input arrows here, and then the rest of this is output arrows. And the really unique thing about the fusion power is that the plasma cannot be transported in any sort of pipe or heat pipe or anything because it's too hot, right? It's a million degrees Celsius. So it has to be direct. So if we put this here, you can see there's a visual connection as well up there, and it has to connect direct. So it has to have the input connected here and then these all these other things here are all outputs so you, you kind of have to get a little creative with it because you know for example i can't do like this because it's two outputs going into each other and then this one won't actually get fed but i could hook it up like this right because it's an output going into an input right here or i could hook it up like this output going to input and there's all different ways you can kind of do this and nest them together but the important thing to note is that these do need to be direct inputs you cannot transport the plasma at all whatsoever and then you need to leave room of course for this hot fluorocatone to be output from each of these generators otherwise it will back up and stop working and let's move to an actual setup where this is going to make more sense so if we come over here this is kind of an example of what you could build. Now, is this the absolute most optimized possible way to do it? Highly unlikely, uh, but I tried to make it look kind of nice. And you can see here with our new pipe visualization in, in 2.0 is all of these pipes are connected and you can see all the reactors have now kicked on for the most part. And this setup can generate up to 1.9 gigawatts of power from this little thing here. And in fact, these likely are not even needed. You can see they're not even on. So 
I would actually have to add even more generators for more power consumption or for more uh, consumption of plasma to actually fully utilize all of these. But you can see these six in the middle are being used. And, you know, you can get kind of tricky with it. So I have, it's hard to see with all the different icons, but if we turn that off, you can see that, you know, this connects into here, which then connects through here, and you kind of just stagger them. And, you know, this one is now connected from the side because this outputs plasma to the left, and then this connects up from there. And really the trickiest part is just getting your fluoroketone actually output, uh, you know, all outputs so you don't have anything backed up. But this one does do that, and you could expand this even further if you want. I mean, heck, you could probably you could take this and just mirror it below it. And you may not have enough reactors at that point, but you could take this and just flip it below it and potentially just double this to almost four gigawatts of power just like that. And the other thing to touch on is just like nuclear power, these do get a neighbor bonus and they can actually have a higher neighbor bonus potentially than nuclear power can. Because due to the amount of connection points, you can see down here, it has four different connection points, right? It has four different plasma and then also four different uh, fluoroketone uh, entry points, and it can pass through both of these. So you can get pretty creative with this and you can get up to a five neighbor bonus on these, which would be equivalent essentially to 500% bonus. You know, th this neighbor bonus here is so strong that we actually only need six of these for all this power and then the two, the four on the outside here are not actually even being utilized because we just don't have enough uh, generators to actually pull that much. But if we were to add more, uh, these would all kick on as well. So you can kind of arrange these and it's nice because they give a good uh, visual representation too if it's actually connected. You can see like the pipes are running through there and uh, they, they all kind of just visually look connected. So it's a lot easier to tell if you're actually hooking these up correctly. And if I show you down here, it's even more evident when you actually go to connect them. You can see here that if I uh, take this and I go like this, you can see that it is kind of like merging with it right there. The nice thing is you really only need to cut, well, you do only need to connect the fluoroketone and it can pass it through too, which is another excellent part of this is it will pass it through the reactors. So you only have to send it in one place, as you can see I'm doing here, and it will just pass through all of these, right? And then you can, uh, you know, you can just kind of go with this however you want, whatever design you want to do to get your max neighbor bonus. Uh, now this will connect, uh, it will kind of, and you can see, it's actually passing through the plasma too. So you technically could kind of block these and it will pass it through. It just means it's like a little less connection points you would have potentially, uh, depending how you arrange it. But generally you can see like now this starts to all puzzle piece together and you know, you can you can really just kind of go wild with it and and uh, and just start expanding it out like this. And really, your only limitation is just going to be the ability to actually ins insert the fusion power cells in here. Because if you go like if I did this, you wouldn't be able to insert power cells into these metal ones. But you can kind of just keep puzzling this out and growing it bigger and bigger. And this can generate an absolutely massive amount of power. And then the last step is you take this hot fluoroketone that comes out of these generators and you you don't have to tank it, but I am. And then you send it into one of these cryogenic plants from Aquello and you do this cooling recipe and it will take 10 of it and take five seconds and then output the cool version of it. And it's a one to one ratio, 10 in, 10 out. And this has so far completely supported itself. I jump started it with a little bit, obviously to just get it running, but then I took that away and now it's just fully supporting itself here. And you can see it's actually, no, it is very, very slightly overproducing it. So you could ratio out the generators to make it perfect because again, remember it is a perfect ratio, one of these to two of these. So if we have six of these uh, consuming uh, the fluoroketone, then theoretically that'd be like 12 generators. Obviously we have quite a lot more than that. We have uh, 38. So <laughs> it's uh, definitely more than that. I mean, these these aren't really on, so so this would make it a bit closer. But yeah, I, I would maybe put a tank just so that you don't have a complete backup, but then you can use this for other things, of course. You could take any excess of this and you can make other things with this, uh, like these 
quantum processors you could take some of this extra into but that's honestly pretty much it it's it's not as complicated as it may sound and there's so many different ways you can lay this out you can see i did a little bit of a different setup here i did two of them here and i mean this is too many of these i would really want to be taking these out uh again because it's one to two although you do get the neighbor bonus so you do have to factor that in the neighbor bonus is something that you need to factor in uh because each one of these uh, if it were actually on would be getting a neighbor bonus of one effectively making each reactor count as two so this would actually be four reactors uh meaning this would be eight turbines over here so uh th that that works out pretty well um uh, but yeah you can do i mean again you you can see like how like so many different layouts you can do with this i'm sure there's some highly optimized perfect way you can do this i've not found it yet because i've just not needed to and not put in the time and effort to uh you know iterate over and over and over again but even this setup i'm quite happy with this i actually i just made this today and uh you know again you could just flip this you could just take this whole thing you know minus all the all the other stuff you could just take this whole thing and then uh vertically flip it and stick it down here and you would be good to go and it would probably kick these on maybe you would even need to add one or two more uh but you can just easily expand your power like that and uh it's it's really pretty straightforward uh but you know maybe not initially and if you've never messed with this type of stuff like if you're new to the game perhaps just coming in with space age and you never even messed with nuclear power before this may be a fair bit overwhelming but i actually consider it more simple than nuclear power because you don't have to deal with heat pipes you know it's only two things you don't have all four of these different things you have to mess with it's just the reactors and the generators and really the trickiest part is just figuring out the direct hookups for plasma while still allowing the hot fluoroctone to be output correctly but other than that you can just keep scaling this and scaling this as you want you can use this on your space platforms of course you can use it obviously on aquello will probably be your main uh power source on aquello but then you can get this on other planets and that is pretty much it there's not much else to cover with this as far as uh, i can find and you know if there is anything major i missed please do let me know down in the comments but i hope you found this helpful kind of get maybe this gave you a few ideas of some builds you can do or helped you understand some things that you you know maybe weren't quite clear on before uh but this is this is overall an excellent power generation source and i plan to use it extensively uh pretty much for all my power I think I, I just really love this and that's gonna do it thank you all so much for watching I really appreciate it and again if you did find it helpful a like on the video is very much appreciated as well and if you are new and not already sub to the channel feel free to to keep up with all future space age content but until next time I look forward to seeing you all and do take care